This is the ultimate vlogging camera when it comes to the front facing camera. It is the Infinix 035G. Let's unbox it. We're looking at 4K 60 frames per second on that 50 megapixel front vlog camera. We have 144 hertz uh, refresh rate. It's running on MediaTek 8020 processor. You get up to 21 gigabyte of RAM. That's with a mixture of mixing it with the RAM and the storage as well. We get 108 megapixel OIS ultra rear camera, 68 watt supercharger in there as well. So this is packing a bunch of stuff for the money that you pay for it. So we have the device firstly in there. So this is wrapped up. Nice to go. As you can see there, it says 50 megapixel front vlog camera, 4K 60 frames per second, and some of the other specifications that you need to know about in there. And uh, just uh, peel this off. This is actually a really nice color. Look at that. And when you shimmer against the light, it kind of just uh, gives you different hue in terms of colors, which looks really good. Let's just peel off that bit there. So look at that. Just looks really nice. Anyway, let's carry on with it. And then elsewhere in the box, we have our SIM ejector tool in here. It's nicely wrapped in a plastic casing. So SIM ejector tool there. And then we have a silicone case in here as well to keep it nice and pristine. And this is what it looks like with it inside of the case. As you can see there. Fits nice and snug, no issues there at all. And then we have that 60, 68 watt uh, Infinix charger in there. Three pin charger, because I'm in the UK. And then, in here we get our USB-A to USB-C cable. And then we have in here headphones. I haven't seen this in a packaging in a very long time. So closer look at the device itself, we have this curved display. So that curves around it ever so slightly, which is actually quite nice, although I'm a big fan of flat uh, displays. On the back, we have those cameras on the back. So those big camera array. Looks really nice as well. I love the finishing on the back. And then on the right side, we have a volume control there and a power button as well. Up top, we have just a speaker and microphone up top there. It looks really cool. Powered by Infinix. And on the bottom is our USB-C port and also the SIM card tray uh, to insert your SIM card and speaker grill on the bottom as well. It's nice and slim, nice profile to it. I really like the look and feel of this. It feels really premium uh, from the get-go, which is really good. The display itself, it's a 6.78 Full HD Plus display. And like I said, you have the 3D curved AMOLED display, 144 hertz refresh. The resolution itself is 1080 by 2400, in case people need to know. And for battery, you're looking at 5,000 mAh battery, and it's also running on the latest Android 13 operating system. The camera setup on the back is um, 108 megapixel with optical image stabilization for the main camera. Then we have a 13 megapixel and another two megapixel camera in there. We'll find out what those are when we switch it on. There's also a screen protector already pre-installed as well, which is really good. Just means you don't have to go and buy all these extra things. It's set up, ready to go. You just have to switch it on, set it up like we're doing right now. Type in there feels good as well. The vibrator motor actually feels solid, which is good because sometimes you do get those uh, sort of mid-tier devices that becomes, when you start to type on it, you start to feel where they've skimmed back on uh, quality, but actually the typing experience is actually good so far. Okay, so once you've got it all set up, let's have a quick tour of what the device is about. So we do get some bloatware on here, for example, some of these stuff that you probably would never use. Uh, although you, you could probably remove them as well, so it's probably not something that's permanent yet. So you can remove uh, some of these apps if you don't want it. It's so like this store here, we can remove it completely, which is good. But there's so, so a lot of XOS family apps in here as well, which if you don't need them, just maybe delete some of those but yeah you do get some bloatware already on here but not as much as i've seen on some of the devices on the market today we drag down up on the top so you can see some of the options available so we can see like notifications and so on we drag down from the other side we can see some of the quick settings options uh, like brightness levels we can get all the way to the top as you can see that's going to blind the camera and then go all the way down to go nicely fades as well. We go into our settings to see what options are available. So here we are. So we have my phone. So if you tap that, that will tell you all about your device. Uh, so this is running on XOS uh, version 13.1.0, which is based on Android 13. We get the model number on there. We got Dimensity 80. Uh, 20 in, in terms of the CPU. It tells us again front face cameras 50 megapixel. We have 12 gigabytes of RAM, but you can expand it with another 9 gig using the internal memory. 5000 milliamp hour battery, 256 gigabytes of internal storage, uh, 1080 by 2400 in terms of resolution. So, yeah, this tells you all about your device, which I quite like. It gives you a quick glance of what you're actually going to be getting 
uh, once you get your device all set up. And then we have things like Wi-Fi settings and Bluetooth settings and so on. But where I want to go to is things like personalization, because here we can change the themes. For example, we can have moving wallpaper, static wallpaper. We have always on display settings and so on. We come back out, we have things like your display and brightness. So here we can change from light theme to dark theme. So some, peop some people like that, I prefer light theme. Don't judge me, I just prefer it. Then we have adaptive brightness, things like high brightness mode if you need it. Then most importantly, we have our screen refresh rate. So we can go between all this refresh rate available here, which is actually pretty good because most devices don't give you that many options. So we can go between 60 Hertz, 120 Hertz and 144 Hertz of refresh rate. Or you can just leave it to automatically switch between the refresh rate because then when you game in, it will automatically switch. When you're not gaming, it can drop it right back down to something that doesn't need a higher refresh rate. We're going to sound and vibration settings. We go down and here we can do things like DTS sound. So look at that, you can change the type of sound quality you're going to be getting in terms of immersiveness. Uh, so we have smart music, video and game and uh, Smart would automatically switch between them. Or you got Equalizer as well, so if you know what you're doing, uh, you can go here and actually switch up the Equalizer settings. And then we go back out completely, and then we get things like your security settings, so password and security. So this allows face unlock and fingerprint unlock as well. So if you lock out, lock the if you come out, lock the device, it works pretty well. So just tap my finger. As you can see there, it just unlocks straight away. There's no hiccups there at all. One more thing actually before I leave this area, the settings, is special functions. So here we can go into uh, more to window option so you can activate more to window if you want to do more to window stuff and swipe with three fingers gesture and then there's memory fusion this is where you can expand your uh, ram so you can see there you got um, mem fusion from 12 to 6 you can merge it together you can actually set the virtual ram as well to the limit that you want so you can go all the way to nine gigabytes if you want so you'd have to reset your phone to make sure that registers uh, permanently as well then you got things like smart panel again you can change those settings to you know it drags on the side, like we've seen on Samsung's, for example, your game mode, social turbo, and so on. And X-Clone is good for bringing over your old device to your new smartphone. Over to the camera though, this is where it's very important because they talk about this front-facing camera, but we go through the camera settings here. So we have film, uh, film mode. So here you can add things like filters and so on. So you got travel, vintage, you can add different look in terms of film mode. Go to video, video just standard as always. We can change the, uh, uh, bokeh effect on the video which is really good so you don't need like a special cinematic mode to do it you can just uh, uh, change those settings there if you wish to do so you've got things like effects so you can add different effects as well to how you want it to look the look and feel you've got filters you can add your lot as well so these are lots this is pretty good this is very very much content creator ready if you ask me you've got ultra wide there you've got one times that big resolution and then you got three times uh, zoom there as well. So it starts to get a bit noisy on that three times zoom and tries to lock in as well when it comes to the stabilization, as you can see there. Then you have AI cam, which means everything that you take, it will pick out the best uh, possible scenario, best possible settings to make sure you get the best shot uh, possible when you're taking photos. We have portrait mode as well, which you can adjust the bokeh. Then you have super night mode across all the focal length. Then we go to more, we've got things like AR space, uh, we have things like slow motion settings, short video for short form content, and pro mode as well. If we go back into video, uh, we can see the options available up top. So we have 4K at 30 frames per second. Uh, we also have 1080p uh, option there at 30 frames and 720p at 30 frames as well. Uh, we go into one times, this will give you 4K at 60 frames per second. Uh, 4K 30, so you can go up to 4K 60 if, you use, if you're shooting with the main uh, camera lens there. It also has something called ultimate enhancement mode. Um, again, I'm not sure what this will do to your videos, but I probably wouldn't put that on just to make sure you get the original true to life, what you can see in front of you. Then we go into camera where you can see all the focal length again, across the range, you can see there. And then up top, we have that 108 megapixel mode. Uh, you have to hold your phone quite steady as well because it takes a bit more effort there in that area. Uh, but that will allow you to capture high resolution videos and also get a lot of detail uh, in your video work when you're shooting out and about. If we flip it around, so we can see ourselves. Uh, so here it's just standard right now, but we can also go into that 50 megapixel mode, which means we're getting more detail. Already I can see the difference there, the blacks uh, here, the colors, the highlights looks really good as well. It even monitors the backlight, which is really good. I think that's a really good shout. Uh, we're gonna, uh, let, let me test this, let me test this. So this is recording on that 4K 60 frames per second for front-facing camera. Uh, as you can see, I haven't put on anything that you can tap to adjust different uh, lighting and so on. And I think it looks decent. I don't think it looks bad at all. Uh, they're not lying when they say this is going to be a good camera for 
uh, vlogging on the go. So 4K 60 frames per second is pretty decent. As you can see there, it's uh, adjusting pretty well, even with the backlight and harsh lighting on my face. I think it does a good job. And there's that 50 megapixel front facing camera for stills. I think it looks really good. It manages my skin tone very well. The resolution is still good. The, qu the quality is really good there, really good resolution. So yeah, good job. Watching videos look good as well. As you can see here, we're watching a 4K video that I shot uh, not too long ago. Uh, so you can see there, we can watch really high resolution, really good quality. The colors are detailed as well, good viewing angles. Uh, so no issues there at all. So, so this would be a great device for watching videos as well on the go. On to Obio Gaming, just to see how it performs as well. I think it's pretty good in terms of how fluid it is. So we just play a bit of a Call of Duty here. Colors look good. <laughs> Touch sampling looks decent as well, in terms of how reactive it is. It's no lag, no issues at all, nice and smooth. Although it does get a bit warmer, um, but that's to be expected when gaming, for example, uh, it's more graphic intensive, so it's getting a bit hot by the camera area, just to my left hand. Uh, but yes, but gaming is still good though, it's still pretty much doing what is meant to do. We're getting the kills in there as well. Nice. So yeah, for first impressions, I think um, it's doing well in terms of performing well under pressure, uh, just, you know, making sure that my gaming experience is no lag, uh, there's no issues there at all. So it works really well. It's doing what it's meant to do. So that's the first look, unboxing, first impressions of the uh, Infinix 030 5G. As always, let me know what you think in the comments below. If you have any questions, drop them there as well. But I think it's a really good device in terms of it feels solid. I love the, the how lightweight it is. It just feels really nice and premium in hand and good cameras as well. And big battery life to go with that. And a fast charge as well in the box. Oh, and earbuds. Interesting. But yeah, let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.